Praise the Lord. We are discussing Q&A. The question is, where did the name Jesus come from? The Hebrew name for Jesus was Yahshua. Translated into Greek, Jesus. To Latin, Jesus. And to the English, Jesus. So it comes from the Hebrew to the Greek to the Latin and then to the English. The letter J was the last letter added to the English alphabet. Every word with the J at one time was pronounced with the Y sound. Yon instead of John. Or it would be Jesus instead of Jesus. But as the English language evolved and became complete, with the letter J being the last letter to be added, it took the place of the Y sound before words that would begin, that later on began with J. Jan became John. James became James. Jesus became Jesus. That Y sound is similar to some of the Semitic vowels of the Hebrew language. Some try to say that the name of Jesus uh, derived from Zeus, but that is not correct. There's no connection. However, the name Yeshua in Hebrew and Joshua in English is the same name, though Joshua would be, would be considered Hebrew. Joshua, Jesus, it's the same name. Joshua has more of a Hebrew root. Jesus going through the process of Greek, Latin, and into the English, same word. But now, this is the reason. In the beginning, everyone spoke a Semitic tongue. Uh, all the mankind was of one language in the book of Genesis. And uh, that was a Hebrew tongue, Semitic tongue. But we say Hebrew because we follow the bloodline of the righteous. From Adam to Seth to Noah to Sam to Abraham. And that bloodline was Herber, where they get the name Hebrew from. Abraham was called the Hebrew. And the language they spoke was the language of Adam. Noah, descendant of Adam, and all of his children, they spoke the same language. All the mankind did. And that was a Semitic tongue. Now, during the Tower of Babel, when man refused to scatter as God instructed, Genesis chapter 11, he changed their languages. He changed their tongue so that they could not understand each other. Those who spoke the same language went one way, another went another, another group separated. This is where your origin of languages came from, the Tower of Babel. In the Arabic language, Babel means gateway. In the Hebrew, it means confusion. They were confused, thus leaving off the building of the tower for the vain sake, and they began to scatter as God instructed. Now, God given these different languages, you got a lot of people that think you cannot call upon the name of God except in the Hebrew tongue, but that's ridiculous. God created the languages, and it would be foolish to think that he established all these languages, but he left the pronunciation of his name out. That you could only pronounce his name in one language. That is ridiculous. When God spread it, the people then gave them different languages. He gave each language the ability to call on his name. The 
The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic, majority Hebrew. The name of God was Yah. Joshua, the son of Nun, Joshua is Yahshua. But as time went on, as time went on, you know, different kingdoms began to come about. The Hebrew language had no vowel sounds, but they had a few letters that you can use as a vowel sound. But as they entered into captivity, the, the children of God, they began to mix sometimes uh, heathen alphabets along with the Jewish alphabet to try to pronounce certain words. And the more the Jews were led into captivity, they began to lose their language because they've been in captivity for so many years. There's a book called The Strong Concordance. It's a like a dictionary of all, all the Hebrew and Greek words in the Bible. In some of those concordance, you have for the Old Testament, the uh, Hebrew Babylonian. And other concordance, the same concordance, you may have Hebrew Aramaic for the Old Testament. Both indicating the different types of languages that were mingled into the Hebrew language. Now, the Old Testament was written in Paleo Hebrew, pure Hebrew. But as time went on, they took up on uh, heathen alphabets and it mingled with the Hebrew language. As a matter of fact, one of the prophets got upset. It said because it said your children, he said your children speak with two tongues the Hebrew language, and the language of the heathens. And so as time went on, the Hebrew language began to fade away. Why is that? Because the Hebrew language was given because God's word came to the Jew first, came to the Hebrew first. But as the Old Testament came to an end and the Christ came, the time of the Gentiles was beginning. And the language of the Gentiles or the nations was not Hebrew. As a matter of fact, many of the Hebrews uh, no longer could speak that language. So the first translation into another language of the Old Testament was in Greek, known as the Septuagint. It was the first translation of the Hebrew Bible into another Bible. And then from that point on, it was translated into many different languages. Uh, well, the New Testament was translated into many different languages. But the Old Testament, the first language it was translated into was Greek because of the rising of the Greeks in empire. Alexander the Great spread it to Greek culture. Amen. And it became the dominant language. And even the Jews, uh, had to adapt because many of them had many of them had forgotten their own tongue because of captivity. Now, the Greek language represented the nations. And God chose the Greek language to write the New Testament. We must understand that. It was God's will. Alexander the Great, the third, the third kingdom of Daniel's prophecy and of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he spread the Greek culture throughout the world. And even when the Romans took over, they still kept a lot of the Greek culture. And though Rome brought in the Latin, God chose to use the Greek language as the mother language for the New Testament. 
And so now, many people try to say that you cannot pronounce the name of God in any other language but Hebrew. That is not correct. Because this is not the time of the Jew now. This is the time of the Gentiles. And the language of the Gentiles is not Hebrew. That's full of virtue. And so, therefore, the name of God can be pronounced in every tongue or every language. The book of Romans. Uh, chapter 14, verse 11 says, For it is written, As I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue or language shall confess to God. Every tongue, every language can call upon the name of God in their own tongue. In the Hebrew, the name of Jesus is Yeshua. In Aramaic, Iso. Japanese. Yes, Kirisuto. Greek. Iesus. Latin. Jesus. In the Quran, Isa is used for Jesus and is pronounced 78 times. In Isaiah 28, 11, and 12, God said, with stammering lips and other tongues or languages will I speak to these people. God said that he would speak to mankind with stammering lips and different languages. In the book of John, on the crucifixion of, of Christ, Pilate, uh, he wrote something very interesting. He wrote over the head of Jesus. And it is said that the language that Jesus spoke was Aramaic. He wrote this. John... Uh, Let's see, chapter 19. And verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, this title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew. Yahshua, king of the Jews, Greek, Jesus, king of the Jews, and Latin, Jesus. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not that he's the king of the Jews, but that he says he's the king of the Jews. Pilate said, I've written what I've written. Now, now one time did the Jews deny the name of Jesus in any of those languages. He started off by using the Hebrew, Old Testament. Then he thought about, he wrote down the name in Greek, which became the New Testament. And then Latin, which became the alphabet of the Western world. In other words, these were mothers of languages that spread throughout the whole world. And, and it showed the the show is show the the uh, process of the scriptures Hebrew, Greek, and then Latin, which spread it throughout the Western world. These languages are the foundations of our modern day languages today. What Pablo really was saying when he put it down in Hebrew uh, and Greek and Latin that Jesus was king of the world, because by these languages. Uh, many of the world's dialects were established and the gospel was established. Now, the New Testament was written in many other versions, Coptic, uh, 
Um, Armenian, different languages. But from the Hebrew Yeshua, but when they turned into the Greek language, because they could not find certain pronunciations uh, for the Hebrew to the Greek, they had to use transliteration. In other words, come close to the sound in their language. And so then you get Jesus. From the Greek, the Latin, Jesus. And from there, the English, Jesus. So the name of Jesus uh, does have its beginnings back in the Hebrew, but then through the Greek, through the Latin, and then the name of Jesus. It's English. And make note that English is the language that dominates the world today and that has been used to spread the gospel and the writings of the Bible. So we, we need to understand that there are some that say only can you use the name of God in Hebrew, but that's ridiculous. When you go through the, old, through, through the New Testament, there's only one proper name used concerning the Christ and even to answer God, to pray to God. And that's the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Isa, Jesus. Ye Kiritsuto in Japanese. The name of Jesus is the only name given in the New Testament. Acts 4 and 12. There's no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Because the name of Jesus has the name of Yah in it. In the name of Jesus is the name of the God of the Old Testament. For the name of Jesus, Yahshua, means Yah has become our salvation. So when you say Jesus, you're calling on the Father. Emmanuel, God with us, I feel the virtue. That means somebody listening, you're getting the understanding. I feel the virtue while I'm teaching this now. And so we see then that in every language, we can pronounce the name of God. In Acts, in, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, they heard and the people began to speak in tongues and praise God. The people that were around them heard the disciples that were all Galileans, but they heard them speaking in their native tongue the marvelous works of God. They were praising God. They were praising Jesus. And it was at least 17 different languages, calling on the name of God in their own tongue. You'll find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. It says, now, when this was, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout men, Jews, and devout men out of every nation in the heaven. Now, when this was north abroad, what's that? They received the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with tongues and praise God. That it says this, the multitude was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Then how do we hear every man in our own tongue where when we are born? So you see, tongue means language. They wanted to know the people listening, these are Galileans. But we come from every place under the sun. And these Galileans are speaking about God and praising the Lord in our tongue. They were calling on the name of God in 17 different languages. Parathens, Medes, and Ilmites, Ilamites, the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Asia Phrygia, Familia, in Egypt. It's Africa, and in parts of Libya, uh, about uh, Serene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, Arabians, do we hear them speak in our tongue, our language, the wonderful works of God. 
So we can call upon the name of God. Every tongue shall confess. Every language shall confess. God will speak to us with stammering lips and with other languages. But the name of Jesus is English. And like I said, it, it, it goes back to the Hebrew, Yeshua, to the Greek, Jesus, to the Latin, Jesus, to the English, Jesus. But it's the same word in, in a different language. Uh, and why Greek? Because God chose the Greek language to spread the New Testament, to write it. Greek then was like English is today. It was the language of commerce, of trade, of business. And Alexander, when he conquered the world, his Greek culture was so strong that even when Rome became powerful, they kept a lot of the Grecian ways. And as a matter of fact, like I said, this is the time of the Gentiles. And the language of the Gentiles is not Hebrew. Uh, it was considered Greek. And the languages that derived from the Greek language. Now, in the book of Romans, to give you an example of what I'm saying. Romans 1. And 16, it says, Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Now, that word Greek there represents the nations. I feel the virtue. But it said the Greek because God chose the Greek language to have the New Testament first to be written in. So this is the time of Gentiles and the language is not Hebrew, but it is the language of the nations, which the Bible called the Greeks because English and things like that were not discovered yet. But our words were translated from these languages, the Greek and the Latin, which a lot of their words came forth from the Hebrew. And so that's why we use the name of Jesus. That's where it came from. It's English. But it came from the Hebrew word, Yahshua, to the Greek word, Jesus, the Latin, Jesus, to the English, Jesus. So the name of Jesus is acceptable. Amen. It is acceptable, as is Yahshua. It's the same name, different language. But God chose the New Testament to be written in Greek, even as he chose the Old Testament to be written in Hebrew. The Hebrew language represented the chosen people. The Greek language represented the nations, the non-Jew. And they say Jesus spoke Aramaic. Esho. I-S-H-O. Esho. So now, that means, and if that be the case, uh, when Jesus was living and talking and walking and preaching, if they were speaking in the Arabic, Aramaic language, which comes forth from the Hebrew, they would not have even called him Yeshua. They would have called him by his Aramaic name, Esau. But it's the same as Yeshua. Now, you have uh, you have people who write Jewish Bibles, Jewish New Testaments, and they put Yeshua in the scriptures. It, it, it's so right, Yeshua, the Messiah, is the same as Jesus. But if anybody was to add the Old Testament name of the Father in the New Testament, it would be out of order, because the only name given in the whole New Testament 
to call on heaven is Jesus in every language. It's the only name given. You pray to the Father in my name. If you ask anything in my name, the Holy Spirit comes in my name. You're baptized in my name. Why? Because that is the name of the Father. The name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the whole family of God, heaven and earth, is Jesus. Why is that? Because the name of Jesus means the Father, Yah, has become our salvation. And you shall bring forth the Son. You shall call his name Jesus, which is interpreted God with us, Emmanuel. And so we see then that the name of Jesus is worthy of his honor because it is the name of the Godhead. In the name of Jesus, that's the name of the Father. I come in my Father's name. In the Hebrew, Yahushua. In the Greek, Jesus. In the Latin, Jesus. In the English, Jesus. And what does that name mean? Yah, the Father, has become our salvation. So in the New Testament, the only name given for God is Jesus. And it covers the whole Godhead. That name means Yah. The Father has become our salvation. That's why he said, I come in my Father's name. And that's where the name of Jesus comes from. Anything else that says contrary to that is not true. Somebody says, well, they didn't call on Jesus. English, English wasn't invented yet. Hello. <laughs> English wasn't invented yet. Amen. Amen. But the foundation for the English word was. So every knee shall bow, every tongue, every language shall confess that Jesus, 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 Isa is the Lord. That's where the name of Jesus comes from. It's translated. Uh, from the Hebrew to the Greek to the Latin to the English, but it's the same name as the Hebrew name in a different language. And it is acceptable. I feel the virtue. I feel a strong virtue. So Jesus is English. It is the English name. of God Almighty. It is the English name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus. It's English. And just like God has chosen the Greek language to write the New Testament in, I believe he has chosen the English language in these days, last days, to help spread it, help write and translate the scriptures and send them all over the world. But when I read uh, in Romans, where 1 and 16, where he said, it is the power of God unto salvation, to do not believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In that word, to the Greek, you will find the English language derives and come forth from that. So I pray that this has been edifying and I pray that you will get an understanding. So where did the name Jesus come from? It was translated from the Hebrew Yeshua to the Greek Jesus, Latin Jesus, and to the English. God bless you and may God keep you.